Tiger, welcome back. <laughs> or should I say more appropriately, welcome home. Yeah, um, just unreal, uh, to be honest with you. It's, uh, you know, just the whole tournament has meant so much to me over the years. Um, <clears throat> coming here in 95 for the first time and being able to play as an amateur, winning in 97, and then come full circle 22 years later, be able to do it again. Um, and this is the way it all transpired today. There were so many different scenarios that could have transpired on that back nine. Uh, there were so many guys who had a chance to win. Leaderboard was absolutely packed and everyone was playing well. So uh, you could have had more drama um, than what we ha we all had out there. And oh, now I know why I'm balding. Um, <laughs> this stuff is hard. <laughs> it just... Yeah, uh, just to come back here and then to play as well as I did and did all the things, all the little things well this week um, and to do it here. Uh, this has meant so much to me and my family, uh, this tournament, and uh, to have everyone here. Um, it's something I'll never, ever forget. This is clearly one of those monumental days in all of sport when people all around the world will say, where were you? when Tiger won his fifth green jacket in, in 2019. Well, I know where I was. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a little one foot tap in. So uh, it, it, I, I, it hasn't sunk in at all. I mean, this is one of those things, it's gonna take a little bit of time and uh, I'm just fresh off of just winning the tournament and I, I just can't wait to see how it all unfolded from the TV perspective. I know I had I was grinding hard trying to try and chase Francesco today, and and then all of a sudden the, the leaderboard flipped, and there were a bunch of guys up there who had a chance to win, and um, I hit some of the the best shots on that back nine today. Um, you know, I just I feel like I just flushed it coming home, which was uh, well, that's a nice feeling. Christians, Jim. Tiger, congratulations. Uh, when you walked off the green. Yes. And you saw your mom and your children. Did you flash back to your dad in the initial win? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my dad shouldn't have come in 97. I mean, he had heart complications and um, wasn't supposed to fly, but he flew and came and uh, gave me a putting lesson on Wednesday night, and you know, the rest is history. Um, my dad's no longer here, uh, but my mom's here 22 years later. You know, I happened to win the tournament and then to have both Sam and Charlie here. Um, they were there at the British Open last year when I had the lead, you know, on that back nine, and I, I made a few mistakes and cost myself a chance to win the Open title. Um, I wasn't going to let that happen to them twice. And so for them to see what it's like to have their dad win, win a major championship, um, I, I hope that's something they'll never forget. To Tiger, congratulations, and uh, comeback is going to be the word we're always going to think about here. So how would you describe that for yourself? And also the doubts, since some of us who saw you at Torrey 11 years ago, it's a long time now, and the doubts that you could ever do this again. Well, you know, it, the I had, you know, serious doubts after, you know, what transpired a couple of years ago. I, mean, I could barely walk. I couldn't sit, um, couldn't lay down. I really couldn't do much of anything. Um, luckily, I had the procedure on my back, which gave me a, a chance at, <clears throat> you know, having a, you know, a, a normal life. Um, but then all of a sudden, I realized I could actually swing a golf club again, and uh, I felt if I if I could somehow piece this together, that I still had the hands to do it. Uh, the body's not the same as it was, you know, a long time ago, but. Uh, I still have good hands, and so uh, that certainly has helped. And I've pieced it together, and like you know, um, you know, you know, if you look at it, my my first fourteen wins in majors were always I had the lead in every one of them, or, the, or tied for the lead. Um, to have the opportunity to come back like this, um, you know, it, 
it is probably the, one of the biggest wins I've ever had for sure because of it. Jerry? Tiger, I don't know if you know, but you broke the streak. I had mentioned to you about winners were in the top 10 last 13 years. You were tied for 11th after the first day. So you broke the streak that you were the last one to do so. Congratulations to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you mentioned about the shots you hit coming in. After the tee shot on 11, mm. was there anything that you relied on, tee shot on 12, drive on 13, 14, 15, tee shot on 16, tee shot on 17, and 18? Mm. Was there anything specific that you leaned on? No, no, nothing specific because I, I felt like I was – that was probably the, the strongest part of my game all week was driving the golf ball. Um, I've been working on trying to shape the golf ball both ways coming into this event and, you know, was able to do that. And, uh, yeah, the tee shot 11 was, was awful. You know, leaned on it trying to, trying to hit it, trying to flight it a little bit and it got stuck underneath there and had a shot. And I just, I just kept saying, if I just sneak out of here with a par – we got a lot of golf left, and we got two par fives, gettable pin at at fourteen, uh, another one at seventeen, and you know anything can happen up eighteen. And so I just said, just just keep plodding along. And then next thing you know, I see Brooksy make a mistake at twelve. Francesco made a mistake at twelve. Uh, Patrick was making a run up ahead. DJ was making a run. I mean, Xander was making a run. There are so many different scenarios that that evolved. And I was looking at the board <clears throat> coming off of thirteen green. And then there's you know, six, seven guys with a chance to win this tournament. Uh, but I just kept telling myself, I have, along with Francesco, we have the most holes to play. So whatever they do, I'll just bury the same holes. Um, then it's a moot point. And as you know, I, you know, I birdied 13. I birdied uh, 15 with, with two good shots in there and almost hooped it at 16. Um, so that, that gave me the cush. And I kept telling myself on, on 17, uh, on that tee shot, I said, I've been in this position before. I had a two shot lead with DeMarco and went bogey bogey. Uh, let's go ahead and pipe this ball right down the middle. I said, the little flat squeezer out there, and I did, just smoked it. Um, that made par there. And then 18, I said, hey, it's not over yet. Uh, Arnold lost the tournament, lost all with a double. So let's uh, let's keep the hammer down. Uh, Brooks, you could still make birdie up 18. I can make bogey when our next thing we're in our playoffs. So let's get this ball in play. I did, and I saw him tap out for par. And that, that gave me the cush knowing that I could make bogey. And I had a little bit of mud on my golf ball uh, playing that shot. And I said, just make sure I overcut this thing. Don't undercut it. Overcut it to the right. And I did. I whiffed it and hit over to the right. And I was able to put that ball on the green and two putt. Karen? Tiger, you hadn't had the lead here on a Sunday since you won in 2005. When you had it today, was it like getting back on a bike? You, it was like you had never, you know, gotten off, or were, what was that like? What, what was your you comfort know, it, level? It, it didn't feel unfamiliar because I was, I had the lead at the Open Championship, so it was just two majors, two majors ago. So now that would be something different if I didn't have the lead from 05. Uh, to now, but you know, it was just last year in July that I had the lead, and so I just kept saying, "You know, I, I've been here; it wasn't that long ago. Uh, just go ahead and just keep playing your game, keep plodding along, and uh, keep doing all the little things correctly. Keep missing the ball in the correct spots. You know, be committed to it. Even with the winds puffing up and down, um, be committed to the shot and the shot shape. And I was. Gee. Tiger, you appeared to exude extreme calm. Um, is that something you were sensing and aware of? And um, also, is that something attributable to the gum? And why gum this week? <laughs> well, it's, I'm chomping on this gum because I usually get so hungry, I keep eating so much. And it curves my appetite a little bit, which is nice. Um, you know, most of the time, most of the issues I have at tournaments, I lose so much weight, as you all know. So, um, so I don't know if that's what it is, but what was the other question? Calmness. Calmness. Oh, more um, than normal? Did you, no, did you feel it? I just felt so prepared coming into this event. You know, this year, yeah, my finishes probably don't really re reflect it, but I was starting to shape the golf ball the way that I, I know I can, um, which I needed for this week. And, you know, 
prep for the master starts you know six months ago and so just trying to make sure that i i get ready to peak for this one week and i did and everything came together this week which was great and um I kept doing all the little things correctly. I missed the golf ball in the correct spots time and time and time again. And if I was out of position, so be it. Um, take my bogey and, and move on. I had no doubles this week. And um, you know, just kept, as I said, I just kept plodding along. And then? I figured, uh, since your kids are growing up now, do they have a deeper appreciation of the work that you do? And uh, second is, uh, Joe and you had a conversation after five uh, just some insight into that. Yeah, um, I think that I think the kids are starting to understand, you know, that how much this this game means to me and um, some of the things I've done in the game uh, prior to prior to this comeback. Um, they only knew that golf caused me a lot of pain. You know, if I tried to swing a club, I'd be end up on the ground, and I, I struggled for years, and that's basically all, all I remember. Um, luckily that uh, I've had the procedure where that's no longer the case and I can do this again. And so you know, we're creating new memories for them and uh, it's just very special. Uh, the, the talk that Joey and I had off of five, um, I think he just listened. And I was saying some things I can't really repeat here. Um, <clears throat> and then I went in, into the restroom and uh, Proceeded to say the same things over and over to myself, and then I came out and I felt a lot better. Robert. Tiger, congratulations. Uh, one through 14, I know the, the all majors are, are, are special to you, and but one you usually have you, you focused on because of what it meant to you with your dad, and 14 obviously uh, had significance too with Tory Pines. Where do you put this one? Uh, I I mean, it's got to be right up there, right? Um, with all the things that I've battled through and uh, just was able to be lucky enough and fortunate enough to be able to do this again. And, uh, you know, the, it's ironic that, you know, I've given a chance to, to play golf again. And lo and behold, I, I won a tournament coming from behind, which I hadn't done for the first 14. And so it's just, um, just amazing. JC? Tiger, uh, my generation, we kids who grew up in the late 70s, the 80s, the 90s, had to hear it from our fathers about how great the 1986 Masters was with Jack Nicklaus and the crowds. Given what you remember from that tournament and that final round, maybe watching it on TV mm -hmm. as a kid and now being in this arena, um, does this Masters enter into that conversation as a possible rivalry as to the best Masters final round? Um, I, I don't know if it is or not, but... I can tell you that 86 meant a lot to me because that was the first memory that I have of the Masters. Uh, seeing Jack celebrate a four iron into the green on 15 when he when he did that. I mean, I have never seen anyone celebrate an iron shot into the green before. And so <clears throat> that that's the moment that, that stuck with me. And then I remember seeing him hug Jackie there at, at 18, um, how special that was. Uh, and then I remember, you know, Obviously, Seve made a mistake at 15, and, and Greg made a mistake at 18. So, uh, 86, and you know, he was 46 years old. I'm 43. Um, we had little spells in between. I mean, he had, what, six years or so, I think, where he didn't win uh, a major championship. And for me, it was 11 years. So, uh, in either case, and I think that's what everyone else is that's for them to decide. Uh, it's special to me, especially to my, my friends and family. And uh, I think that everyone out here who was here got a chance to witness something that was was amazing and just the competitive environment. I mean, it was, everyone was playing well at the same time. And there, it could have gone so many different ways. Uh, just happened to, you know, hang in there and, and persevere. John. Tiger. For those of us watching, 12 seemed to be the seminal moment. When Francesco's ball went in the water, did it change anything you were thinking? Was it always going to be over the bunker center of the green? That's all I was concentrating on. Um, I had 47 over the first tongue in the bunker there. 
And so I was just, my number was hitting at 50 and just be committed to hitting at 50. There's a reason why I, I saw Brooksy ended up short. Um, Poulton ended up short as well. And so I, when I was up there in that tee box and it was about my turn to go, and I could feel that wind puff up a little bit. And it had to been something, I think those, I mean, Brooks is stronger than I am, and he fights it better than I do. And so I'm sure he hit nine iron and didn't make it. So I knew my nine iron couldn't cover the flag. And so I had to play left. And I said, just be committed hitting over that tongue of that bunker. And let's just get out of here and let's go handle the par fives. And I did. And <clears throat> the, yeah, the, the mistake that Francesco made, made there led a lot of guys back into the tournament, uh, myself included. Kirk. Yeah, Tiger, do you think Jack should be worried now as far as the 18 majors? <laughs> well, I don't know if he's, he's worried or not. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's home and, and West Palm just chilling and watching. The impact you think you've had on your sport? Uh, I think that I've driven uh, a lot more used to the game. Um, and a lot of the guys that are especially on the tour now, um, are training. Um, they're getting bigger, stronger, faster, more athletic. Uh, they're recovering better. They're hitting the ball prodigious distances. And you know, a little bit that's probably a tribute to what, what I did you know, when I first turned pro. I was the only one in the gym, uh, except for VJ. And so it was just basically he and I for years. And now everyone trains. You know, everyone works on their bodies besides their game. And, uh, and hey, it even Phil's working out. So uh, things have come a long way. Joy. I, uh, I think uh, I have my own personal sport, inspiring story in sports today. But I just wanted to know what is yours? Which is your most inspiring sp story in sports? Mine? Um... <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. That's that's a great question. There's so many. Uh, I I don't have one that really truly stands out. To be honest with you. Sorry, Francisco. Uh, hi, Tiger. Um, for all the of all the things that you've been through during the the last uh, years with with struggling with your your um, body issues, is there any specific moment that has come to your mind uh, during the last few hours? Couple hours? Yeah, since 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 you you tapped the the putt on eighteen, is there any moment that has come to your mind? There, not really one moment. No, I I can tell you one thing. I'm pretty sore right now. <laughs> um, I I've, I've definitely let it all go today, and I ramped up the speed, and um, I was starting to you know have a little bit of pop on the bat out there, which was good to see. And, uh, I can promise you one thing: I'm not going to hit a golf ball tomorrow. <laughs> Ian uh, yeah Tiger the, the last time you won here you said afterward that it meant a lot to you uh, because of your father's health at the time w were there moments today where you thought of him his memory were you inspired by him was there a shot out there that you stood over the ball and, and thought of him and some of the lessons uh, he made it down you know, the only thing I, I thought about was <clears throat> on a couple of the putts like a 12-13 coming down the hill um, and especially the one on nine, which is putt to the picture. That's it. It's putt to the picture. That's what he always taught me how to do. Um, and that's what I just kept telling myself out there and just, just putt to the picture. Brian? Tiger, was there a, um, over here, yeah. was, was there a moment um, even maybe early in the week before the tournament where you felt particularly good about your, you know, sort of comfortable or, or so forth about your chances or, or maybe a shot early in the tournament that you felt that way? Uh, you know, I, I, as I said, my, the shots that I was playing, you know, throughout this year were some of the shots that I, I, I was going to need for this week. And they were starting to come around. And at the match play, I hit a, a couple really nice draws out, you know, out there off the tee and um, was starting to feel comfortable turning it from right to left. And uh, I just felt that, you know, it's, I'm getting comfortable with it. And pretty soon here, I'll start letting it go. And I'll start to 
let let the speed go and started letting it increase. And I did this week, and I started to put it out there. And, and then every now and again, I drop the tee down and just hit the little squeezer cut out there. Uh, but even those, if I didn't spin it too much, even those were going a little bit further. Uh, my swing was getting a little bit better, and uh, more so than any other golf course that we that we play, you have to miss the golf ball in the correct spots. <clears throat> and so I just kept doing that time and time again. And if I didn't have a good look at a putt, now nah, I was going to lag it up there and move on. And uh, I missed a few you know, shorties out there for for birdie this week. But I said, hey, you know what? That's fine. Everyone else is going to do it as well. Um, just keep missing the golf ball in the correct spots. And I did. Where is Tiger, you told us on Tuesday that you didn't need to win, but you really wanted to. And you also said that the win at East Lake confirmed that you could still win. What does this win confirm for you? Well, I can win majors now. Yeah, it, um, the, the win at East Lake was, was a, a big confidence booster for me because, you know, I, I'd come close last year a couple times, um, but you still need to cross the finish line. And uh, I just didn't quite do it. Uh, I didn't do it at Tampa. I didn't do it at the Open Championship. Uh, it was a little bit better at the PGA, but still I didn't win. And so Eastlake was was a big step for me, uh, confirming that I, I could still win out here and against the best players. Because uh, Eastlake, obviously, is the, top, is the hottest 30 guys for the year. And uh, to be able to do that against Rory and, and Rosie there um, uh, gave me a, a lot of confidence going into this year. And I said, you know what, just keep building on it. And let's try and get the mind and body you know, peaking towards Augusta. Um, so my last three major championships have been been pretty good, and so uh, that that in, its, in itself gives me a lot of confidence going going down the road. Chris, I just wondered after you hit the first putt on 18, there's I don't want to call it a quiet moment, but you're standing off to the side while Francesco and Tony put it out. What's going through your mind at at that moment? It's a new green. That damn thing should have broke. I mean it. I hit a pure putt, you know. Uh, I remember that putt breaking. It just didn't break. Um, <clears throat> no, but I, I say, you know, it's not over yet. I still got to make this putt. Uh, come on, just you know, keep it together, keep focused. Um, go ahead and make sure that I, I commit to even as a one, you know, one and a half foot putt. Commit, and I did, and knocked it in. And God knows what I did after that. And congratulations, Tiger. Thank you. You have such a huge impact on so many people. Do you have any messaging after this comeback and persevering? Well, I was very fortunate to be given an, another chance to do something that I love to do. Uh, but more importantly, I, I've been able to participate in my, my kids' lives um, in a way that I couldn't do for a number of years. And so, you know, they're, they're a lot more active than I am. And... I don't, I'm a little competitive myself, and so I try and keep up, and uh, I tried to do that for a number of years, and I just couldn't do it. But now I'm starting to do it and starting to build, you know, play with them and, and do things in their sports, and it's something that I had always missed, you know, because I, I always felt like I could do pretty much anything physically, um, but then for a while there, I just couldn't even, couldn't even walk, so. Now I'm able to play golf again and <clears throat> and do it at, at an elite level again, which is um, something that uh, I'm just very blessed to be able to have that opportunity again. Steve. Tiger, congratulations. I want to know sort of a follow-up to Ann's question. Mm -hmm. People have struggles in their lives. They have personal struggles, physical struggles. You've overcome these things. What message might you say to people who are struggling? What encouragement would you give them not to give up, to, to, to say that you can possibly overcome these issues? Well, you never give up. It's just, that's a given. You always fight, and that just, you know, giving up's never in the equation. Um, granted, pushing and, and being competitive has got me into this position, but... Uh, it's also what got me out of it. And so uh, I've always had a, a pretty good work ethic throughout my career and throughout my life. And I just had to change the work ethic a bit. 
and work on some different things. And so, you know, focused on that and just keep fighting. And that's just part of the deal. We wake up every morning and there's always challenges in front of us and keep fighting and keep getting through them. Strong? Tiger, I'm curious, what did uh, uh, Sam and Charlie say to you after it was over and, and what have they maybe said to you over the past couple of years that perhaps motivated you? Well, I don't think we heard, oh, I definitely didn't hear them because I was screaming. And I think everyone else was too, so. Um, I think that, uh, I, I think, I, I, well, I hope, I hope they're proud of me. I hope they're proud of their dad. And so uh, I've been, been very blessed to have two great kids and uh, just to have them here to see this and witness this. Uh, and I try and describe, they've never been to Augusta National. So trying to describe the slopes and things and everything, and I said, this is a pretty unique event. This is very special. And I uh, really hope you guys are able to come. And so it all worked out, and here they are. Justin, congratulations, Tiger. Thank you. Um, can you, I know you touched on it a little bit, but it seems like your smile got bigger as the week kind of went on. Can you just talk about how happy you were to, to be out there and uh, competing, and then obviously to be able to win? Yeah, I mean, I... <clears throat> I had a, a pretty good feeling going into this week that uh, I was going to be able to contend in this event. Uh, I really felt that I was starting to shape the golf ball and my, my putting was starting to come around. My short game has been there. Uh, I know that, that I made a few mistakes you know, the last couple of tournaments, but I just felt like it was there. Uh, my hands were good. And uh, I just, I just kept, as I kept alluding to earlier is that I just, kept telling myself to miss the ball in the correct spots. Um, and I did. I, you know, Time and time again, I was very disciplined in what I was doing out there. Uh, even when, you know, yesterday, and you know, guys were shooting 64 left and right, um, I was just kind of going around, just handle your business, work your way up the board. Uh, we still got a lot, of, a lot of golf, a lot of holes to play, and just make sure that I'm there in the end. Uh, so... I can shoot myself out of the tournament, uh, but just make sure that I, I keep myself in the event. There's so many different things that can happen on the back nine on Sunday. We all know that. And it played itself out again. Uh, there are so many different scenarios that could have happened after after 12. Uh, it could have gone so many different ways. And I just kept saying, just keep hanging in there until the last couple holes, and we'll see where we are. Just keep hanging in there. And burning 15, 16, um, you know, gave me a nice little cush. Uh, with the last two holes to play, but still there's different scenarios that could have happened there as well. Ignacio? Uh, yeah. this, uh, does this uh, victory uh, change your playing schedule for the year? Um, nope. Want me to elaborate? <laughs> uh, I'm, as I said, I'm not going to play as much as I did last year. Uh, I played a little bit too much last year because I kept trying to qualify for World Golf Championships and events and playoffs. And so the playing schedule doesn't change. I'm going to play a little bit less than I did last year. And uh, again, just playing uh, the, the tournaments I do play in, I'll be fully invested and, and committed to playing and trying to win. Jeff. How you look at some of the shots you played today, like the, the putt from the back of nine or the, the uh, smart shot to hit it well left to the pin at 12, what, do you feel your biggest asset on the grounds here is experience, or if not, what is? Well, I think that if it, it helps being around here and, and playing in this golf course so many different times, and, and unfortunately I've hit the ball in some weird spots, like nine being one of them. I've been up there before. And, uh, you know, I, I hadn't been that centered to that flag. Uh, center of the green. I've been on more on the right side of the green, so I had a little, little better angle. Um, but I've I've had a very similar putt to that speed wise. So uh, make sure that I, if I make a mistake on that putt, make the mistake of leaving it short up on the, the middle ridge. Uh, don't make the mistake of hitting it too hard and have it go off the front of the green. Uh, I can walk, walk away with the three putt and still be in the tournament. Uh, who knows? I can make one down from the middle shelf. Who knows? Uh, but just don't make the mistake long and, and make six. 
I know I have a pint of pint for birdie, but just don't make six here. And I think it's just the little things of, of discipline like that is what it takes to win on, on this golf course. I mean, look at Bernie. He's, what, 61, uh, made the cut and was under par. I mean, that's um, – it, it goes to show you, if you don't understand how to play this, this golf course, um, uh, you can beat pretty much anyone because it's, it's about how to play it. Gentlemen in the back, second row of the back, yes, sir, yep. you. Tiger, at the players, you made the point that uh, Jack's record of 18 majors wasn't one of those, you know, bullet points on the poster that you were chasing all your life. Now that you're one closer at 15, is that more of a focus? Is that big, bigger goal now? You know, I really haven't thought about that yet. Um, I'm sure that I'll, I'll probably think of that, you know, going down the road. Maybe, maybe not, but... Right now, it's a little soon, and I'm just enjoying 15. Brian? Yeah, Tiger, you're talking about shaping shots and, and everything coming together. You used to rate your game A, B, B plus. Can you rate where your game is right now? Um, I'm not going to do that, but I will tell you this, that it's the best I've felt with a driver in years. Um, I was able to hit the golf ball both ways this week, and... Some of the shots I hit down 13, turn around the corner. A uh, couple of drives down two. Uh, some of the bombs I hit down down three. Uh, I was and then to hit little squeezers out there down seven. Um, uh, you saw it today on on 15 and 17 and even on 18, just little trap squeezers as out there as well. So I was able to hit you know, you know, both ends of the spectrum, low cuts and high draws, and that's. Um, that's not easy to do, uh, so I, I just felt really felt that I had that much control in my, my long game, and uh, it, it paid off. Mike, did you have a question? Next to Jim. Hey, yeah, uh, Tiger, to be able to do this in front of your kids, you know, a lot of people didn't think that you would obviously be here in this in this spot here on Sunday afternoon, but now to be able to give your children this memory, what does that mean to you? It means the world to me. Uh, their their love and their their support is it's I just can't say enough how much that that meant to me and uh, throughout my my struggles there when I really had a hard time just moving around um, and this their infectiousness of happiness you know that's um, it's you know I was going through a, a tough time physically I mean there was a lot of times when I really couldn't move and so. That in itself is difficult, um, but just to have them there, and then now to have them see their their pops win, um, just like my pops saw me win here, it uh, it's pretty special. Jim, Tiger, how much more of a joyous experience is this? And also, what does age mean anymore for a professional athlete? We've had a forty-one-year-old Super Bowl winner, and now you. Uh, does age? Has it been expanded and extended, or is it less relevant? Well, I think it's training and nutrition. Um, exercise programs have, have changed. They've progressed. The treatment protocols have, have changed. And, and the guys are able to take care of their bodies for a longer period of time. We know how important it is to eat, eat perfectly and to train and also the, the recovery tactics that, that you have to employ, um, especially as you get older. You know, we as we get older, it, it, it sucks up in those ice baths, but that's just part of the deal. Um, but I think just think that you know the athletes, because of the understanding of uh, the general science of of sports performance, uh, has allowed you know athletes to you know push their primes into much later stages. And then also you also you also have to be lucky too. Um, you, you can't have those big major injuries in some of the sports, especially contact sports. Uh, my sport's different. I can play it at a, at a much longer period of time. I don't have to hit hit the ball 340 yards. Uh, I can still plod my way around the golf course. And so well, we saw it here with, with Jack in 98. He had a chance to win. We saw um, Tom Watson at 59 had a had it on his putter. So it in this sport, we're able to play a much longer you know, period of time, and you're just seeing guys that 
are taking care of their bodies a lot, much long, long, a lot better and able to play longer. Fernando. Tiger, congratulations uh, on the win. Uh, this week was a very special week, too, for Latin American golf. It was the first time that a Latin American amateur championship made a cut. So just a few thoughts about the amateur players that were here this week. Yeah, they just think that the game is growing. I mean, before, I think you had uh, Joaquin uh, playing well. Uh, the, the game of golf is growing. It's, it's, it's now a, a global sport. We're getting players from all over the world. And... Uh, they're they're younger, they're better, and they're they're hungry to play. It's just a matter of them, you know, working their way up with opportunities. And so we're we're starting to see the game has expanded. Uh, it's not just your general golf countries, you know, historically whether it's United States or this UK or it's Australia or South Africa or even Japan. Now it's, it's truly a global sport, and you're seeing kids that are, are better, younger, uh, at a much earlier age than you've ever seen before. Joe, right down the back, Tiger. First, first congrats, Tiger. Um, you've had such an influence on the younger golfers, and talking to Brooks outside not too long ago, he said Tiger's back. Do you feel like you're back physically, mentally, and everything that it takes <laughs> to win at this level? Yeah, I, I do because I I just did it, you know. <laughs> I and uh, I was able to play some of my my best golf uh, over the last basically I think the last three days, and uh, the first day was a little bit here and there, but the last three days I I really played well. And as I, I'm gonna keep saying this, but there are so many different scenarios that could have happened on that back nine, and. I've been in I've been in the, that spot before. I've been in a position where I've won, and I've been in a position where I've lost. Um, and, but I just kept telling myself that at least I'm in that position. That let's go ahead, and, and we have a lot of holes to play. And uh, I was able to handle the heat, you know, down the stretch and and pull off some of my best shots. Got two more questions, Messima. <clears throat> This congratulations came from Italy, Tiger. We are waiting. We are waiting for you. It's okay. We are waiting for you in Italy for three years to go to the Ryder Cup, in the historic Ryder Cup in Rome. So, with this kind of shape you are showing, you are planning to come as a player and find again maybe Francesco Molinari, or as a captain or vice captain. Last time you were in Italy, someone, a cameraman, broke your. Yeah, Eight, my tooth, I yeah. <laughs> yeah tooth. I had a great smile after that one, didn't <laughs> but I? But waiting for um, seeing you playing. Well, I'm a captain this year. So I'm, I'm hoping to make my own team. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when uh, the tournament and the selection process goes to Italy. Um, I, we, that's a long way to go. The, the points are you know, don't, don't even start for a, a little bit. So um, we'll see what happens from now and then. Final question, Bob. Tiger, um, you got to play in the final round with one of your uh, teammates from the Ryder Cup, Tony Finau. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you think about his game. I mean, God, he hits it, hits it long. Um, I mean, he, he makes a little half swing and, and still hits the ball out there, you know, 310, 320 in the air. Um, it just, it's just remarkable. And, you know, it helps that you, your, your ankle's not dislocated either, so... Uh, he was able to you know, walk around there and hit, hit good shots. Uh, but Tony has, he's made some, some amazing leaps in the last couple of years. Uh, he's really starting to piece together a, a, a game that's going to contend, you know, week in and week out. I mean, it, it, he shows it every now and again, but it's, it's getting more consistent. And uh, he's learning, you know, what to do, what not to do strategically and, uh, you can see that the mind working out there. So it wasn't like he was when he was younger, just go ahead and just pound it out there. Um, he's trying to figure out shots and shapes and um, starting to understand how to play, and, and it's only going to get better. And with that length, it's such an asset, um, especially in, in today's game, that uh, he'll win you know multiple tournaments, and uh, I'm sure a major championship is definitely in his future. Tiger, could you indulge us and just tell us the clubs you hit into. Okay. Which green today for the record, please. 
Okay, into each green? Each one, if you could. Okay. I hit eight iron into one. I hit a <laughs> four iron into two. Um, I hit a sand wedge into three. I hit a four iron short of the green on four. Uh, I hit a five iron to the, sorry, a four iron to the right on five. I hit an eight iron into six. I hit an eight iron into seven. I hit a five wood over the back at eight, chip back. Uh, nine, I hit an eight iron there. Uh, 10, I pitched out and then hit an eight iron in there. I made bogey. Uh, 11, I hit a seven iron. 12, I hit nine. 13, I hit eight. Uh, 14, 14, I hit nine. Uh, 15, I hit a five iron. 16, I hit eight iron. Uh, 17, I hit an eight iron. And 18, I hit an eight iron. How many eight irons is that? <laughs> Tiger thinks your victory today is going to inspire not only children, but a lot of adults all around the world. A magnificent achievement. Congratulations. Uh, you are a very, very worthy champion, and uh, we're proud that you're wearing that jacket for the fifth time today. Yeah, I'm excited about show and tell at school. <laughs>